Hi everyone, my name is Obina Penegwe. Um, the topic of my presentation is control of voltages in distribution networks with high PV penetration. I'm being supervised by Dr. Aristides Kiprakis. And um, so this talk is just going to be an overview of what my PhD is about. Um, talking about what I've done in the last one year and about two months, and also talking about where I hope this work is, is going to get onto. Um, it's not going to be as detailed and as mathematical as, um, as Dahunsi's presentation, so um, don't expect so much math. Uh, so I'll be talking about um, just briefly introduction, previous work method, Control, the control scheme, BES versus Cotelman, feature work and conclusion and references. So I start with this picture that shows um, what our power system looks like traditionally. So um, the way our present or our power system was designed classically was for power to flow in one direction. So we have the generating stations and then power flows all through the transmissions um, network, across the distribution network, and to the points where the electricity is actually uh, consumed. This can be quite straightforward um, in terms of planning because you just have the loads and you have the, generating, the generators and you just get the, the power from the generators to the loads. Um, so this is the traditional power system. Um, however, uh, there are some environmental concerns that came up because um, most of these generators are powered by fossil fuels. So in, in, in the last um, 20, 10, 30 years, there's been a lot of investment, um, a lot of research, a lot of commitment by governments globally to try to reduce the, the carbon emission that arises from our generating stations. And and that has been successful so far because we now have new um, we now have new power um, and new energy sources that are cleaner than our fossil fuels. And this second diagram here shows what our power system is beginning to look like. So if you can see, um, we unlike unlike the last diagram, we're now having, especially in the distribution network, we're having penetration of these reno, um, new energy sources um, closer to where the consumers are. So we have we've had significant in, um, progress in, in photovoltaics and wind energy and tidal and wave energy and, and the rest of them. Um, then if, if you have a look at this, you can see that we are no longer having the, our traditional unidirectional power flow from the power generating stations to the consumers. Rather, we're having power just flowing across the network wherever there is generation to possible load points. And we also have technologies like the electric vehicles that have also needed to be connected to this, to this, um, to this network. And this has caused some complexities for, for especially the, the distribution network because the network was not designed to um, accommodate this kind of changes. It becomes more complex because, because um, most of these new or smart networks are just upgrades. Traditionally, they weren't designed for this. So it has to be most of the networks that are getting to this status are actually upgrades. The only few networks that are designed from scratch to um, behave in this, in this manner. So connection of these Connection of um, some of these technologies leads to some complications in the, in the network. So we have reverse power flow, where sometimes you, you can actually have power trying to flow out from the distribution network into the medium voltage network. And we have harmonics that could be caused by um, connection of um, power electronic devices, which come with, um, with this wind and um, solar integration. Uh, we have also voltage unbalance, and then we have over voltage. So of this, and, and then there are so many other complications that can come up. But of these complications, um, the over voltage is quite a significant one because um, 
there are regulations, for instance, in Europe we have this standard that that's kind of defines what um, of the, the range of a voltage and um, the voltages should be. Um, so it means that if we need to have more of these um, distributed green <coughs> connected to the network, we are limited by these factors, especially this one. Um, and then, so this, this actually limits how much we can go. Despite the improvement in technology and research, it it's kind of limits how much we can go in, in incorporating these, these new energy sources. And then phot photovoltaics of these, amongst these new sources as well, photovoltaics are, are more popular and prevalent in distribution networks because they are um, quite easy to deploy and um, photovoltaics as well have, um, the, ha the, we've seen the cost over the years of um, installing photovoltaics drop considerably and, and also some governments and, uh, ha have also been helpful by providing incentives such as the feeding tariffs like in the UK and some other countries and even though in the UK, I think this has been cut um, significantly, um, maybe by 60% from 2016. So this is why the PV networks, we're expecting that there will be even greater penetration of the photovoltaics in, in, the, in the distribution networks, and hence the choice of, um, the, choice of the PV as the, as, this, as the renewable, the most prevalent renewable energy in, in the distribution networks. So the problem will be how can we have control schemes to manage some resources in the distribution network so that we can allow higher penetration of these um, renewable energy sources while especially keeping um, voltages within the statutory bounds. So it, it's kind of um, a two-way thing. We'll try to get more, more of these renewable energy sources into the network and at the same time, try to make sure the voltages are, are not exceeding their bounds. So, um, so far, um, there the, will be, so for this, for this study, I've been um, modeling the distribution networks, I've been able to use the OpenDSS and MATLAB to, MATLAB for the controls and OpenDSS for scripting of the network models, and, and also some networks in Simulink, but mo most of them have been on, on OpenDSS. Um, and so far, um, there's been a, a distributed control algorithm, which I'm going to just talk about um, briefly, that I've been able to try to implement. I mean, it's not, um, it's been implemented before, but I tried to get this working on, on, on network. And then um, the advancements I've made to this distributed algorithm, and then ultimately the aim will be to design a controller and we're, I'm also hoping to use um, the model predictive control that Dahonsi has, has spoken about in details. And I'll also tell you some of the challenges um, using MPC for, for this kind of distribution network modeling. So um, this is um, a, a kind of a distributed scheme that was proposed by, um, um, by Phil Van Kustem um, in University of Leeds and some, some other people working there. And basically what this model does, or this, what this um, control scheme does is to um, try to manage voltage in the, in the distribution network and uh, making use of um, reactive power, which, which isn't very effective, um, which, which isn't very effective working for distribution networks because of the R, R to um, X ratio. <coughs> and, and also when, when this cannot be able to keep the voltages within limits, then it's a mix of, um, of, reactive, uh, of um, active power curtailment. So we have these modes, mode A, B, C, D, and E, and not to borrow with so much details about this. So these are, these are kind of the different states that the controller switches the, or tries to manage the voltage to be within limits when we're having like high penetration of, of PVs in, in the network. So basically, like I said, this is ma making use of reactive power um, and active power curtailment. Reactive power isn't very effective in distribution networks, but it's been chosen for this algorithm because um, it comes at almost, I mean, it, it doesn't come at a very high cost for, for the network. Uh, and then curtailment. <coughs> so
So I did um, this kind of implementation, and um, and this this was run for um, for a, a, a certain period of time. It's it's been tested on this. Um, it's been tested on this um, test um, network. It's a single feeder model for the testing, and um, and these are some of the uh, some of the charts we have. So this is the this is kind of the input. So the it's assumed that the solar the solar panel um, produces active power according to this chart, um, and each of and there's um, the, this is connected to um, each node, there is a load, and then there is a, um, um, a PV panel on each of the nodes, and this is the output profile for for um, the PV. This here shows the shows what happens at the substation um, for the active power. So we can see that there is actually more more um, more active power produced by these PVs in this network. Um, than, than there is actually load at this point. So that's why we can observe this um, kind of reverse power flow um, while the simulation was running. Uh, this shows the transitions of the states. So what during, so for each of the for each of the modes um, that are described here, uh, this shows how the system is switching between these nodes. Um, between these modes as the simulation is run. Uh, this shows um, a profile of the bus voltages. Um, the the, the 1.07 per unit was uh, chosen for the simulation as the, as the, as the limit, the upper limit for, for voltages here. Um, but you can see, you can see as, the, as the PV as the PV active power keeps increasing, even to very high extents, there's actually this there's actually this overshoot here before the system um, brings it down at 1.07 and before it goes down. So this algorithm actually doesn't have very very quick um, way of responding to this to this, and because it's because of some kind of time constants that have been put here, there are some. So, so in, in order to make the system to not, because you can try to control voltage and then you, take it, you make a control action because of, um, because of a perceived over voltage and then, and then maybe that switches again and you have to keep making like decisions very quickly. So they've tried to put like um, a lag time or some kind of high, high stereosis time just to, just to observe to see if the system is still behaving the way it's behaving. So that's why. And this kind of this kind of thing is, is being seen here. And so this is actually the final profile for the actual power the PV produces. So this is and um, if if this is compared to, to this, we can if comparing this with this, we can see that there's actually curtailments that takes place um, for 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 this for for this simulation, so this is fi actually what the PV produces finally. So these PVs these PVs are assumed to have some kind of um, inverters that have reactive power capability. Actually, that uh, I, I don't think at the moment that is very very. I, I don't think that is quite um, implemented physically in the UK. But I think countries like Germany have already started considering that they could be able to. Um, very make the power factor not just one um, for for these kind of installations and then this is um, a profile of the of the reactive power while while the simulation was was going on so i was able to implement this algorithm and get very similar results to what 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 they obtained and <clears throat> in and in advancing with this because the, why so at the moment um I'm advancing on this, on this, um, on this, on this, on this um, scheme. Why I'm doing so rather than having just um, trying to use reactive power and then curtailment, I'm trying to add energy storage systems. But then energy storage systems come 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 at a cost. They're not they're not free. They're they're quite um, expensive. So we're trying to see 
um, at the moment using this scheme, if we try to, to check the cost of installing battery, battery energy storage system versus curtailment, so do we rather just curtail the energy? It makes sense that we shouldn't curtail, we should store the energy and use for later. But then we're trying to make some very, um, re some very real, real, um, some very serious cost analysis to actually see how we're faring, and then we can expand this within the um, within the life cycle or lifespan of the PVs and the batteries, and then see in the long run are we are we are we benefiting or are we just saving energy, storing energy, and not doing much with it. So that's that's what. Um, that's what I'm, I'm looking at currently. And then another thing that's, that's, that wasn't done here was we're also trying to, because this, this was quite, um, this isn't, the testing of this thing wasn't very realistic. This is just like an assumption. Okay, this could happen. But we're also trying right now to run this kind of system on a real single, on, on a real um, distribution network feeder. And then we're going to be using the going to be using the real PV profile, like for real, real, real life PV PV data. And then this this is going to become this is going to have some challenges as well because um, PV PV um, generation isn't it's quite um, very uh, it's quite intermittent and it's not as as smooth as it is. And so while while adding BESS currently on 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 the, on the real model. The challenges we started seeing are stuff like um, the, the batteries. So the batteries are trying. Batteries should come in when we have high production of PVs. But then it could, depending on the charging rate of the batteries, the batteries could actually get fully charged, and, and then there's still there's still um, PV being um, power being, being produced. So choosing appropriate charging for for the PVs as well. Is going to be uh, is going to come come, come into into the picture, and like I said, considering the fact that this is quite very intermittent, um, these are the kind of challenges uh, we're, I'm, I'm looking at right now. Um, so we sent an abstract for for a paper that should capture some of the results we're getting here, and I've written here that information obtained in this phase will be useful for decision making by the controller. So the Controller I'm trying to design at the end of the day is going to be having to make decisions between um, between use of um, BESS or curtailment or um, or reactive power in the distribution network. So, in knowledge of the costs, in knowledge of um, the cost at different times of the day or for for different seasons, um, are going to come in handy for the controller to be able to take decisions. So we have this particular situation. What do we do for this network? Okay, and then that so the MPC controller is the is going to be the next phase after from January. That's what we're going to be looking at. Um, be, been looking at the MPC, um, just like uh, down C thirty guys. Um, there's quite some 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 kind of challenges. So uh, MC, MPC usually will require you to have a model of of the of the system you're trying to to work on. Um, but we know the power systems has has um, it's it's quite difficult to capture in a single matrix all the dynamics of a power system and they're always changing so um, this is one of the challenges that we also also looking at and then if and then when so so when this when we get this sorted we're going to design this controller that makes use of available options in the network to to take decisions to manage the network appropriately and then we're going to be also looking at possibilities of demand side management with this kind of um, control scheme. So seeing if it's possible to actually send signals to, to load to shut off or shut down for, for a specific period of time. So it's just going to be a controller that has in, at its disposal this huge amount of information at, at every point in time to take decisions that are going to be best for the network and also to make sure that um, as much as possible all the, all the renewable energy or the distributed gener the generators in the distribution network are are being um, taken care of. So, in conclusion, this work will use a coordinated control method to manage resources on the network to increase um, penetration 
and then the outcomes of this are going to be is going to be very very beneficial to distribution network operators for the environment as well because we have greener energy serving our homes and also for the consumers hopefully and um, it drives down costs so and um, these are my references and thanks for listening <laughs>